Hello, hello, hello. This is Gaijin Ass. And I'm back with another podcast. It's been a long time. So, <clears throat> flying solo this time. Uh, a renewed, a renewed, uh, not faith, a renewed commitment to doing this podcast, having people on the podcast, and getting good content out to everybody who, who's interested in listening. You know, it literally, in the heartbeat of Tokyo, uh, connections with everything, connection, huge connections with professional kickboxing, huge connections with professional MMA, huge connections, professional wrestling, uh, we know entertainers, we know actors, we know models, we know politicians, Christmas party at the Russian embassy, uh, people doing, uh, jumping off of buildings with parachutes. Tons of people to talk to. People upon people. And it's been a huge waste. It's been over a year. <clears throat> but it's official. The Guy Ass Podcast is back up and running from now. And today there's a few things to talk about. We'll cover those and then get on with it. Uh, let's see here. First thing I'd like to mention is spring. I'd also like to mention that I'm sipping... Uh, Vodka, vodka, cranberry juice, and pink grapefruit juice. <clears throat> this is delicious and refreshing. It is also my <clears throat> go-to summer cocktail that I have enjoyed year after year. Uh, vodka and I have had our moments, our ups and downs, uh, our battles. <laughs> some of them have been good moments, some of them have been bad. <coughs> But it's hard to argue with some vodka and cranberry juice when it's hot outside and humid. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the key key point: stay away from that. Stay away from this shit. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You know that's all I want to do. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You know, just be dry on those days. Give the body time to uh, flush everything out. <coughs> And then enjoy those drinks, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, one good thing is I've noticed when I, over the years I figured out, when I train seriously, whatever it may be, if it's uh, boxing or kickboxing or if I'm grappling or now powerlifting, <clears throat> when I'm training really seriously, there's a limit that my body won't let me go beyond. It's, it just shuts off. Like I just don't want to have anything else to drink. I'm just done. And that's pretty cool, and uh, that's been going on now for several several weeks. So FYI, if you, if you aren't up to speed, back in the powerlifting. Gone in for bench press, squats, deadlifts, and uh, going to do my first, go for my first PRs in forever in August at uh, the Olympic uh, facility in Gifu, because <coughs> I'll be up there in August. Uh, the rest of the time, I'm lifting in Nike Books uh, at a Tip X. That's something else I could hit on today. I'm sure I'll talk about it in the future as well. Tip, Tip X. What a dump. Let's talk about that for a minute as far as gyms go. I've been working in gyms and training in gyms. I, started, I got my first job at a gym when I was uh, 16. It was a heat wave health and fitness in South Carolina, in Charleston, South Carolina. <clears throat> this guy named Gary owned it. And I started working there. And, uh, you know, wiping down equipment. Wiping off the equipment, wiping on treadmills. And Gary had a pretty cool operation. He was a former bodybuilder. Uh, he, knew his, he knew his shit. He knew how to run a gym. He knew how to set up a gym. He knew the equipment that needed to be in a gym. And he knew about training. <clears throat> he was quite bitter. 
as a failed bodybuilder. But he knew what he was doing. <clears throat> then I would go on later to work at multitudes of other gyms just all over the country, the East Coast, West Coast, and lifting. I've never been on a proper lifting program before. This is the first time in my life. I'm 36. This is the first time in my life I've actually been on a lifting program. Everything else <clears throat> has always been uh, ad hoc, whatever I came up with. You know, when I was wrestling in high school, it was, uh, you know, circuit, everyone just did circuit training. You just basically go to failure <clears throat> in a circuit. The majority of our training was uh, calisthenics and plyometrics. And the hell, the smelly, sweaty hell, which is a three-hour wrestling practice, you know, and it, with a great team. And uh, I never played football in high school, so I never got exposed to these, you know, that 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 scene they had more advanced weightlifting concepts and then uh in the marines uh i figured out on my own that the most important lift for me was squats i'd never my father was a bench presser he you know special forces military <coughs> squats just weren't part of his thing and you know when you're jumping out of airplanes you got hundreds and hundreds of jumps i guess squatting isn't the most entertaining thing to do so he never did it so i never did it when I was in the Marine Corps, I found that squatting was uh, really beneficial for combat sports. I figured out that if I wanted to hit people hard and pick people up and slam them on their head, it came from my legs and my hips, <clears throat> a lot of that. Also, I found that squatting heavy and squatting often really helped with humps when you're carrying a big, big-ass pack and some weapons company, company's pussy mortar plate plus a saw plus everything else, you, uh... Having strong legs and hips is a big deal. But I've never been on a program before, so I'm quite psyched and pumped to be doing that right now. It's fresh and new, which is something I really needed athletically. <clears throat> and doing this in Tipness, or Tip X, it was renovated. I signed, the, get, get, just listen to this. <clears throat> I'd been in there about a year and change ago on a free pass. Went in, hit the weight room, did some, some bench, some incline press, some squats and whatnot. And they, they, it, was, it wasn't a great gym, but they had the basic uh, equipment that one would need. You know, s proper squat racks. You know, a prop two. I think it was two benches. They had an incline bench. Uh, you know, an array of dumbbells. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of free weights in, in a relatively small area. But we, when I uh, started powerlifting again in March back in California with uh, my buddy Ed, Evil Ed, and my wife, we, I just decided, okay, I'm going to do this for a year, just see where it goes. Uh, I'll keep kickboxing, but I'll just turn the volume down on that and turn the volume up on this powerlifting. <clears throat> and <clears throat> so we came back, and I just said, fuck it. We went over to Tipness and signed up. I noticed they had renovated the lobby. I didn't realize they had renovated the entire fitness center. And they would cut the, the weight room in half. Literally. They would exchanged a lot of equipment. We didn't realize this until after we signed a six-month contract. I know. Brilliant. And <clears throat> it's just one example. <clears throat> Here's one example. There is a power rack. They got a power rack. And this is the only place to do squats with weight in the whole goddamn gym. You know, vast fields of areas to do TRX and quote-unquote functional training with 360-degree butt squeezing, curl, bosu ball, engage core, flip, calf, raise, you know, yoga, hot yoga, manifestation. But <clears throat> one small area, one place to do squats, a power rack. And... Coincidentally, it is the only place to also do pull-ups. There is nowhere else in the gym to do pull-ups. There's also no one else in the gym to do uh, like parallel dips. <clears throat> it, it all can happen in the power rack. Here's the best part and the punchline. The power rack, the pull-up part of the power rack, is I'm not I'm not kidding here. An inch. It's got an inch of clearance before you hit the ceiling. <clears throat> That's your hand. That's your hands have an inch. So what does this mean? The power rack fits in into the weight room. Literally, it fits in like a glove. Like it just slides right in. There is no clearance. So if you do a pull up, a real pull up, like chin to the bar, your face and head go through the plaster of the ceiling, 
and <clears throat> at the power rack, you could see everywhere the power rack has been ever been in the gym, and they've clearly moved it around because there are holes in the ceiling about the diameter of a human's head. Brilliant. Fucking brilliant. This is a professional fitness center. God knows how much money they spent. How much money they spend renting the space. It's premium real estate. It's massive. Swimming pools. Like I said, vast tracts of land <clears throat> from TRX and stretching and bullshit. <clears throat> a tiny, 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 tiny little room for weight training. For real training. The fuck weight training. Real training. And within that, that, that abomination of a weight room that, that's going on with pull-up bar. It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. And I go in the morning and I just try to make it work. I got six months on this contract. I'm almost done with one month. I am done with one month. I'm in my second month. <clears throat> I'm going to wring out all the juice I can. And then I'm changing up. So maybe the 24-hour joint down the road in Kanamicho or perhaps the Golds. I know there's a Golds not. I didn't realize this until recently. But there's a Golds not too terribly far away. I could probably bike over there. Anyway, um, in the future, when I get in there and I KGB some video <clears throat> of what these fucking trainers are doing, I'll, I'll put it up. It, it's ludicrous. If trainers in the States were doing this, they'd be fired or they'd have a lawsuit. It's just ridiculous. The, the stuff that they're having their uh, quote-unquote clients do. And I know those clients are paying 50 bucks an hour for that crap. Uh, it's just it's just absurd. <clears throat> so that'll be part of it. <clears throat> we get another drink of this fantastic uh, cocktail. That'll do it. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, I'm clearing my throat a lot. I apologize. I did sprints today. That's also part of the program. A lot of conditioning work, so... Bad air in Tokyo gets in my neck. Bothers me when I'm doing high intensity stuff, so <clears throat> excuse me there. Let's see what else is going on. Triple G. Triple G's going on. So, Gennady Glugin. <clears throat> I don't know. Can anybody stop this fucking guy? I don't think so. He's amazing. He's the real deal. I, I read all this bullshit, the, the hate, the, just, just for a moment, the hate. The H-A-T-E, which exists on the internet for this guy, is unbelievable. People calling him out. He's only fought cans. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a setup. It's a fixed fight. It, it blows my mind. <clears throat> it blows my mind. If you know anything about boxing, if you know a goddamn scrap about how to hit people, you just watch, watch Gennady Golovkin train. Watch his fights. He is hitting so hard. I, I understand that it's not a Western style of boxing. It's definitely not an American style of boxing. And I think that really throws off a lot of, you know, conventional boxing heads. <clears throat> or, or, you know, your average Joe fan. It's not what they're used to seeing. It looks awkward. Because it is awkward. It's not the normal kind of boxing. Now, I started boxing in the States. You know, I've trained with Jesse Reed Sr., you know, I've trained with some amazing boxing coaches. <clears throat> However, I came to Japan in uh, 2003, and I was involved both in professional kickboxing at a high level and boxing as well. And they punch different over here. The, the general rules about how you're going to punch are different. How you should hook are different. Then, okay, taking the next step further, I've trained in Thailand. I've trained and fought in Thailand. And they have a, a whole different thing about how you're going to punch. <clears throat> And then go even further. I've never trained in Russia. That's still on the bucket list. But <clears throat> I've analyzed over, you know, many, many hundreds of fights that I've watched how all Russians connect. You know, it's not... When they punch, they turn their knuckles over. It rolls over. And it rolls over. Everything rolls over into the punch. <clears throat> I was specifically taught in California that that's not how you punch. And they have a, they've got a great argument as to why that is. That having been said... I've knocked out one person with a left hand, with a left hook. One person. And it was that, that rollover hook. It was not, <clears throat> it wasn't a parallel hook. It was the kind of hook where your knuckles turn over at the end of the punch and roll into the, into the target. And I knocked the guy clean the fuck out with that. I've also beat some people up with, my, with what I call a Russian right hand hook. 
Fedor Menianko used to do it well. And also I see uh, Triple G do it. It's a very, very fast, looping right hook that can come tight from the shoulder. It doesn't need any runway to, to warm up, really. It loops out, scoops in, and the hand rolls over and the knuckles connect. It's extremely powerful. Everyone I've hit with it in the mouth and face, um, guys who have held mitts for me that I've hit, everyone's commented on it. It's a very, very, very heavy punch. And I see uh, Golovkin employ this with great success in in his fights this guy knows how to punch and he knows how to punch so hard and I just don't see if you actually follow boxing or follow combat sports I don't see how anyone cannot connect with this the guy is just he's Monroe Golovkin Monroe was surprisingly slick he had a lot of moves he's a southpaw <clears throat> he had decent movement he had good head movement and he was he was he was connecting. The thing was, people were. Uh, I think people have already been shocked by the amount of punches that Golovkin got hit with. He sh they shouldn't be. This is a conversation I had with a uh, Shin Nomperetsorn, who was a Raja champion, Rajamun Stadium champion, a Rajamun Stadium champion. Do I need to say that again? Also fought in K1 with great success. He never had any kind of fame from it because of political bullshit between that cunt Ishii and uh, my former boss, Mr. Ihara. But this is a man who, who would devastate people. And in his weight class, we are having to talk about why he wouldn't move up in weight. If he were to move up in weight, <clears throat> for example, like, uh, whoa, shit, what's his name? I've hung out with him before. Uh, we all know the Thai guy who fought heavyweight. Right, it'll come back to me. I apologize for forgetting this guy's name. I've eaten dinner with him before. He give me a smack. Gao Glai. Gao Glai went up heavyweight, and I, m me and uh, my buddy Mike were talking to uh, Shin Shin Nope Ratson or Nope, and asked him like, "What's up? Why don't you move him from weight like that?" And his number one reason was, "At my weight, I can take a lot of hits, and I do take a lot of hits that I'm not worried about. If I were to move up in weight, those same hits that I've been." accustomed to taking could knock me out and that's what Golovkin was doing with Monroe you know everyone was like wow Monroe's connecting it didn't matter look at Golovkin's goddamn record you know how many fights does uh, Gennady Golovkin have it's it's something ridiculous <clears throat> I mean it, professionally he's got over 30 fights his amateur record is something savage and barbaric it's, it's like in the hundreds and hundreds Okay, this guy knows what he can take. He knows how to get hit, and he knows what will put him down and what won't. And he doesn't need to slip and get out of the way of Monroe. He just doesn't need to do it. And go back and watch that fight and pay attention. Watch Monroe land solid shots and watch him be meaningless. Just watch the, 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 the ferocity, the, the, the VOA, the violence of action that uh, Gennady Golovkin puts behind his shots. You know, Monroe is snapping jabs. He's snapping punches. Gennady Golovkin is swinging a fucking sledgehammer into bodies. He is busting apart concrete. That, that's the difference visually, and I don't see how people don't see it. Couple that with his ring generalship, which is just unparalleled. And his, his terrifying left hook. His left hook is... Golovkin is not known for being quick, but his left hook, his close left hook is invisible. It's so fast. It rolls over. It's so hard. <clears throat> and it's got that Russian style. Those knuckles really connect. You know, I mean, he put Monroe down two times in second round and then just, you know, made him quit the fight after that. I'm not talking shit about Monroe either. I quit the fight as well. Triple G hits that hard. He is the real deal. He hits that hard. And I'm very excited to see what happens. After that, uh, <clears throat> that abortion, which was uh, Grandpa Pacquiao and uh, Auntie Mayweather, you know, the super hype of whatever, who gives a shit? What a depressing, sad event. And it really broke my back in a lot of ways. You know, I avoided, I just avoided all that crap, and then I went and watched, and then I watched the fight. And then it just reaffirmed what my, my feelings were before the fight. I just don't give a shit. I don't give a shit anymore about all that. And all that isn't even only boxing. All that is the UFC... It crosses over into music. It crosses over into movies. Just fuck the hype. 
fuck the hype. It doesn't, it never, it just never what it should be. I can't remember where I heard this, but pre-programmed highs are never what you expect them to be. Pre-programmed highs are never what you expect them to be. I doubt the validity of anything that's pre-programmed in advance as far as uh, the goodness or the, the righteousness that's going to, you know, that you're going to, you're going to take away from the event. And that's exactly the Pacquiao Mayweather. Every time I watch Triple G, and I don't get hyped about it, because the, what hype is there? Very little. Whispers in an alley somewhere. But when I watch him fight, I'm generally very pleased. <clears throat> it's combat basics. Combat basics. It's cutting off the ring. It's moving in. It's controlling distance and tempo. And hitting very, very hard. Hitting very, very hard. That's that's fucking fights. That's that's all fights are. That's it. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I would love to see him fight someone like Mayweather. I think he would murder. I think he would mur murder Floyd Mayweather. And I don't see that ever happening. The fight will never ever happen. Not unless Triple G gets hit by a car. He's in a wheelchair. Then Mayweather will sign the contract. Uh, otherwise, it'll never happen. Uh, nothing else to say about Pacquiao and Mayweather. They can live forever or die tomorrow, and it wouldn't matter to me. Let's see what else. Uh, I did also watch uh, Ramon Gonzalez. That was impressive. Two rounds, quite the dismantling. Very impressive. I don't know much about him, but I thought the fight was really good. Uh, so that pumped me up. <clears throat> and uh, it's just... <sighs> yeah, sad states, man. The UFC is in a shambles, and I could care less. I mean, I, I couldn't. I couldn't care less about the UFC. Uh, what a bunch of scumbags. Just a bunch of turds. John Jones, what a piece of shit. Uh, there's nothing happening in the UFC that's interesting. Metamorphosis, apparently Sonnen's going to bang with... Uh, shit, what's his name? Sorry, I've been punched too many times in the head. My memory is shot. Met him in Tokyo. Come on. He's with Megami Fuji. Shinjuku. East Exit. Trains with Eric Paulson. Anyone? What's this guy's name? You guys know who I'm talking about. Ah, Barnett. Josh Barnett. The the war master. So he and Sonan are going to get on in Metamorphosis. See that? that That's interesting to me. Like, uh, <clears throat> not Sonan so much, but uh, Barnett. When I watch Barnett fight... He's actually hyper technical. He, he, he his technique, and I don't mean techniques. I mean technique is far beyond uh, so many fighters in the UFC. Well, it's light years beyond. Um, I I think when I watch Josh Barnett, I just I look at him and I think he's just not really much of an athlete. I mean, I, I think from his the start point, we all have a genetic start point. And then what you do with what you're given genetically, that's up to you. And you can change a lot. <clears throat> you know, genetically, I think I'm extraordinarily slow. I'm a very slow person. However, uh, more than a few people have commented on how fast I am when I, when I box. Uh, yeah, that's just training. That's consistent training over decades. And Barnett has, you know, he's, but I think his start point was, was quite low. You know, I've never been impressed with his athleticism. I've never seen him do anything that was terribly athletic. That having been said, his technique is absolutely fabulous. The son of a bitch has amazing technique standing uh, on the ground. He's trained with everyone. And I also like how he looks at fighting. You know, it's very uh, pragmatic and it's very straightforward. It's by ever what, whatever means necessary. Uh, a lot of people are down on Barnett because, you know, steroids. But newsflash! To the goon squad, everyone's on steroids. Everyone's on steroids. Every goddamn heavyweight. The only person who might not be would be Big Country. And the, the only reason, Roy Nelson, right? The only reason he might not be, and I, by what I mean is he might not be on them now. Okay? And I, I just. Everyone's on juice. <laughs> Every heavyweight. Every light heavyweight, <clears throat> they might not be on them at this moment, but they've done them before. And you know what? If they didn't, they'd be a fucking idiot. Also, to all you like NFL fans, football fans, 
uh, crybabies about this Tom Brady bullshit. Guess what? Everyone on the, everyone in the in the NFL is on juice. Everyone is on gear. Everyone is loaded up. You need to wake up and smell the goddamn diarrhea, because the um, America has got their fucking head up their ass when it comes to performance enhancing drugs, and I don't understand what the big problem is. You know, have an event that's natural. I, who was talking about this? I can't remember. Have an event that's natural. And you know what? If you're if you're one of the rare people who is legitimately natural, you've never ever used anything. Compete in that league, compete in those events. Otherwise, shut the fuck up and let the big boys bang. Everyone's going to always look for an edge. That there's no way around it. So I don't decry, you know, Barnett's usage of uh, of juice. Who gives a shit? You know, I think it was Ken Shamrock who talked about this and said, you know what, fans want us on juice. They want us on gear because that's, they want to see the big knockout. They want to see the slam. They want to see the dramatic moment. And that's true. That's true in MMA. That's true in the NFL. That's true in baseball. And I don't give a shit about basketball, so I'm not even going to comment on that. <clears throat> but it's true across all those sports. It's true in the Olympics as well. Everyone wants to break a world record. Everybody wants an edge. Do you know who develops steroids? Uh, yeah, the Russian and United States government. Bam. Okay. And the, I'm telling you right now, a lot of you won't like this. There's a lot of firefighters, a lot of cops, a lot of special forces soldiers on juice. And why not? Why not? You know, if... if being able to pick this person up or being able to run a little bit faster for a little bit longer, if your life is hanging on whether or not you can do that, you're damn right you should have the edge. So fuck everyone who says this is cheating or thinks it's unethical. You've got your head up your ass. It's easy to say that when you're snug as a bug, sitting on your couch drinking your shitty beer, eating some fucking potato chips. Okay, Try crawling in the ring, crawl in the cage, Okay, or go in the sandbox and uh, pull the trigger. Have someone pull one back at you. And then tell me that you don't want an edge. Get the fuck out of here. <clears throat> so hopefully Sonnen and uh, Barnett will go down. I'd like to see it. I'd be entertained to watch it. Other than that, there's n we could comment on Glory. I'm going to hold off on Glory. I'm going to wait until I have one of my co-pilots with me uh, for the next podcast. we got a lot of stuff to talk about about Glory. It'll be a passionate conversation. This is kind of just the warm-up, the reboot, the get back in it, try on the new shoes, and uh, just get a podcast up. What we want to do is every week. We want one going every week, hopefully on Mondays, around lunchtime, so that everyone can get the new news from the weekend. The new news about combat sports, the new news about uh, Ikebukuro, the craziest, most up-and-coming joint in Tokyo, and about Tokyo in general. So if we have anything, we'll keep it going. Lastly, I would like to comment on Nepal. For those of you who don't know, uh, what, three weeks ago, Nepal had a huge earthquake, you know, 8,000 dead, a bunch of people died on Everest, and many other people don't realize that last Tuesday, they had a second earthquake, a 7.3, uh, not far from Mount Everest, and I can't think of more of a double fuck you uppercut from God than to hit a shitty country like Nepal <clears throat> with back-to-back -back monster earthquakes. I mean, man, that is a raw goddamn deal. And I won't tell anyone to send money or anything because there's no way to ensure that your money, there's just really no way to ensure that your money that you send or you donate goes to where you think it's going to go. But I don't know. Send good vibes the way of Nepal people because that is horrific. Living in Japan, uh, having been here in 2011 for the big one, you realize what an earthquake is and the damage it can do and the hell that it can bring and leave in its wake. So uh, I wish it on nobody. And uh, yeah, good luck. Good luck to Nepalese. That's horrific. Also, Everest. I don't know. I'm not a goddamn mountain climber. I'm, as a hobbyist, I read a lot about it. And I don't know, it just seems like Everest will be unclimbable for a decade. It's almost like it's got to be completely reclimbed. You know, I mean, someone's got to do the whole, blaze a whole new trail. I can imagine the ice flows, everything's just destroyed. All the infrastructure they set up is gone. Um, <clears throat> and I don't even think there's any kind of assessment after the second earthquake, so <sighs> it's horrific what's happened in Nepal. The flip side of that coin is uh, Everest is like a whole new 
it's a whole new uh, obstacle to conquer again. It's 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 raw again. You know, the tourists won't be back on Everest for a long time. It's going to be the serious guys, and I look forward to hearing about that. Uh, anyway, hope nothing else goes bad in Nepal, and hope they can pick up the pieces. Because, yeah, that's not easy. Um, I hope John Jones goes to prison. Probably won't happen, but I can always uh, keep my fingers crossed. And I guess that's it. That's it for this week. Short and sweet. Um, we'll be back next week. We'll see about a guest. Uh, otherwise, that's it. It's Guy Ass. And...